Oh, it's Rick Taylor. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Young Legend. And y'all tuned into the Rap Draft. Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's your boy Rick Taylor back with another episode of The Rap Draft. And I got my dog, Young Legend, here with me, man. What's going on with you, man? Man, what's popping, man? Just trying to get to it. Yeah, nothing much, man. Here on The Rap Draft, we like to interview artists of all kind, whether you're producer, uh, artist, promoter, whatever you do, like whatever art you do, there's a platform for you. And pretty much, we like to let the fans know more about you and what you do and stuff like that. So, with that being said, my first question for you is, where was you born and raised? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Now, being born like in Chicago, like uh, how long were you in Chicago and when did you move to Milwaukee? Oh, uh, well, I moved to Milwaukee at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. So from the time I was born to 12 years old, I was in Chicago. But every summer, I was coming up here to stay with my, mom, my dad mm -hmm. and my um, grandma. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I was doubling dab in Milwaukee and Chicago, and that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Now, growing up, like, what was your childhood like? Man, to be honest with you, bro, like, I had it rough growing up, man. Like, I was staying with my mom, my grandma, rest in peace, both of them, my um, my brother, his name Black Wayne, and um, we was growing up in Chicago rough, like, and I don't mean to talk about it. I ain't talking down on the way I was brought up. I feel like everybody's entitled to a, their own story. Everybody has their own story in life. And with mine it was like, you know, my mom, she had to defend for us growing up. You know what I'm saying? She provided for us the best way she could. I'm not taking nothing away from her. I'm not taking nothing away from my dad. But my mom was there for me majority of my whole life. And it was just rough growing up. I'm talking about like, I had to literally get my clothes from my older brother. You know what I'm saying? This was growing up. So it was like when something was new, it was new because it was handed from my brother. That's how my understanding when growing up was new clothes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was rough. I couldn't afford the Jordans. I couldn't afford the Air Force Ones. Like my mom went to Jace. My mom went to... Uh, what was that Marcus. store car? No, it wasn't in JL Marcus. It was the little, um, what was the little store called? It was like, um, I can't even think of it right now, but it was like a, um, that little penny store, what it's called, um, I, I can't even think of it, man. If y'all, shit, man, if y'all know, know the struggle, man, y'all, y'all had to be there though, but it was like the little store that you go there, um, go there. Shoes were for like a dollar, two, three dollars. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I am right now. Like you know what I'm saying? From what I was to what I am, I'm a striv a strivingly excited for who I am as a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But growing up, it was rough. Yeah. I can't even think of the store right now, but it was crazy. Like we used to go there, we used to get shoes like the um the shacks, stuff like that. You know. Uh, J.C. Penny, we used to go there, go shopping there and stuff, and that's just how I was. Like I was very appreciative with what I did get, mm -hmm. and then when I was able to get it on my own, that's how I got it. Yeah. Now, um, for the people who want to know, who is Young Legend? Man, Young Legend is a jack of all trades. You know, I grew up not having it, so then when I got it, I appreciated it even more. You know. Like I've been, like I said, my mom raised me, but with her being what she was, you know what I'm saying, and me standing up in Milwaukee, I've been able to get it by myself. You know what I'm saying? I like I said, I stay with my grandma. I'm not taking that from her, but one thing she taught us, like, shoot, you know I'm if you knew my grandma, she raised the, the neighborhood on Brown Street. Everybody know my grandma, LT Johnson, they called her Granny Mooch. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people know her, know who she was. But like I said, it's about me, I was just a young individual that wanted to get it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted money. I love money. I, I love being able to say, you know what? I did that. I did that by myself. I had no handouts growing up. 
anything I got, I work for myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's who I am as a person. Like, some people might say I'm prideful, but I just feel like I don't want it to be like, oh, you do something for me, then it's like you lingered over my head. Like, hey, you remember when I did that? I don't, I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd rather, if you go do something, do something for, out of the kindness of your heart. Because everybody know me, I give my last if I could. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to help, whatever. That's who I am as a person. And that's exactly what I like that you said that, like, you know, a lot of people is prideful. Like, sometimes I can be prideful. Like, you know, you don't want, it's just because you don't want that person dangling over your head, but, oh, I did this. And you, a lot of people, are like, really, really do do stuff like that. And I had a lot of that happen to me before, too. So I get what you're saying. So now, like, what or who inspires you to get into, like, the music and everything? Well, what inspired me was my oldest brother. My older brother, I should say. Black Wayne, you know what I'm saying? He um, started doing rap in Chicago, and his was called um, Ticks. True, insane, control society, you know what I'm saying? And then we had a, um, a little rap group called Pluto, and it stood for players like us taking over, you know? And that's how I got inspired in doing music, because it's like, I can remember it like it was yesterday, you know what I'm saying? I seen him doing shows and doing rap stuff like that. And growing up in Chicago, it was rough, but it was also fun, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what's wrong with society now in Milwaukee. It's like, it's no, it's not a lot of fun in the music no more. You know what I'm saying? Cause now he's like, damn, you gotta worry about, okay, if I get too successful or too hot, now I gotta worry about somebody being jealous, trying to take me out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they mad that they can't get where I'm at or they don't know how did I get there. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be like, they feel like you got to report or resort to, you know, selling drugs mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking nobody with what they do. They got to get where they got to go. But my whole thing is like, it's, it's more than that route. You know what I'm saying? You could be successful by doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how I was brought up, you know, outside of the, the rough, rugged life in Chicago. I got here, got with Trio Records. You know, and um, they helped me a lot. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the story. Mm -hmm. Now, I like that you said that um, Trio Records, because that was my next question. Um, I see that you were with Trio Records, and like, um, how did that come about, and how long were you with Trio Records? Man, what's crazy is that I got with Trio Records at the age of 16. But I was under the umbrella of Rebel Life Entertainment, which is the smaller, the youth music program, right? And I was with them at the age of 16. Like I said, I got with Vic around 14, 15. So that's how long I've been around running Rebels. But I got with the music program at that age. Then when I hit 18, I was legally able to do what I wanted to do. So they signed me at the age of 18. I was signed a trio. And that's when I broke my record, She Bad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I was at the age of 18. Actually, it wasn't She Bad with my first record. It was actually doing my thing, which if y'all do y'all research and y'all know me, y'all know that I had a song out here called Doing My Thing with the same beat that Ray Rizzi had for I'm Jacking, you know? And shouts out to Ray Rizzi, shouts out to Shafi, AKA Mr. Filthy, who produced that record. And we just so happened to have the same beat. I don't know how we got the same beat, but in actuality, I'm glad that we did get the same beat because that all that did was just make me go harder and come up with a new song. And that's what happened. I came up with She Bad a couple years later. I was 20. Mm -hmm. And I've been with Trio for, for that length of time, but it was like an on and off relationship. You know what I'm saying? We was rocking, and then it's like I slow down, and it's like, okay, I'm back independent. Then it's like, but me and, uh, me and the CEO, Vic, like we was always Trump tight, so it's like we always stay communicated with each other, stay talking and stuff like that. But I always make sure I check in on like what's going on. Then I got with a label called um, So Nice Entertainment. Um, for y'all that don't know, that was that was actually the new studio 4117. That was Verse. That was his label. I got with him. Uh, 
then after that, like me and Verse, we still Trump type too. I ended up um, leaving So Nice Entertainment, and then I got started my own label called Getting It Up Entertainment with my boy Big Steve, and we was out there pushing she bad left and right. I'm talking about like we was on the on the streets and in Walmart. Cause the good thing about me being a graphic designer, and I hope he don't get in trouble for this, but back then he was working at Best Buy, and he'd get the CDs on wholesale for a little bit of nothing. And it's like, he provide the CDs, I do the labels, I do the graphics, we package up the CDs together. And I like to say, we gave you a top quality project and we sold it for a dollar. And we felt like you couldn't beat that. So it was like, you know what I'm saying? Who gonna say no to a dollar? Right. Them dollars added up, added up, added up. So we'll go get, we'll start off with 100 CDs, come back two or three days, get another 100 CDs. So then it's like, we got the packaging of CDs so much, we used to go to Walmart, to Walmart, to Walmart, to Walmart, selling CDs. And it was crazy, right? We had, um, on one side of the CDs, we had my single, She Bad, and on the other side, on CDs, we had his single called Shake It Like Dice, right? And we would uh, sell the same CD, but with two different covers. So it'd be my song one, on one CD, his song number two. On his CD, if his song was number one, my song was number two. So then it was like, okay, we were selling like the same CD, but people was like, that's, that's supported. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? So I'm like, they'd be like, man, I got this already. We'd be like, nah, you got his song. You know what I'm saying? Or he'd be like, nah, you got his song and vice versa. And a lot of people was like, they respected that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all supporting each other. Y'all ain't out here on, them, on no dummy mode or nothing. And that's how I got the name, The Neighborhood Hustler. Like, people knew me from the streets because I was really out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still to this day, like I said on Facebook and Instagram, like, I'm tucking it back to the basics. Because a lot of people, they rely on social media so much. But I feel like this with my fan base and my gain audience, everybody not on social media. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather go out there and you see me in the streets and you see me for who I am and you be like, you know what? I respect you because you selling CDs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't out here like the bootleg, man. Like, hey, I got this, I got that. I'm selling my own product. Right. Doing everything my own self, genuinely, hand by hand, brick by brick. Right. You know what I'm saying? That way I could say that I built that foundation. Right. I started that from the ground up, ground at the ground zero and worked my way up. Just like I seen you at Walmart. I'm like, Rick, what's happening, man? You know what I'm saying? Got this new single, man. Go go stupid, man. Check it out. He was, all right. You know, woo -woo. Yeah. And the crazy part is, like, I don't have it all. Like, people be like, man, I, ain't got, I don't carry cash on me, right? So I'm like, oh, you know what? I got a card reader. How about that? They, they, oh, man, I didn't think he was going to say that. You know what I'm saying? I take cash out. All forms of money is, is all good. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to deny no green. Right. Any way you can get it. Now, let me ask you something. Like, um... Why, like, why did you leave Trio Records and what was it like being on Trio Records? Well, truthfully, as blunt as I could be, I left Trio Records because it was more of a situation where me and the artist on the label, like, we was tight, but I felt that it was... It was time for me to make a name for myself, you know? Like, I made a name for every other artist. Like, I was selling CDs for the label for the longest, you know what I'm saying? And, and Vic could vouch for it. Like, I'm selling CDs left and right. Like, I didn't care because I believed in the bigger picture. Like, if you want a label, you my label mate. So I'm gonna make sure that I do what I can to help you get where you need to go. And that's kind of how we made the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the um, the promotions because it'd be like I'm a shout out to Young O, you know um, he go by Joe Jetson now. Um, when he did Booty Hot or Seesaw, it was like I had my fan base tap into his song, and vice versa. He had his fan base tap into my song. So when we dropped the records, it was like, hey, all my fans, if y'all rock with me, let me know what y'all think about this record, Seesaw by um, by Young O. 
and he do the same thing. Everybody tap into my record. Let me know what you think about the She Bad record by Young Legend. And that's how, I'm saying that's what happened. But we, we, I ain't gonna say we fell off or, or we parted ways. It was just that, to that point where I felt like, you know, I didn't want it to be like nobody could felt like I needed needed this or whatever like that. But I felt like, you know, like Vic, man, because Vic was the one that told me like, look, at this point, I don't know if Trio can do for you that you wanted to go. You know what I'm saying? So he always told me from the beginning, like, look, I can get you here. To, I can get you as far as I can get you. But to that next level, I'm not too sure if I can get you there because I'm still learning. And I respected that. So that's how it happened. And then it's like we ended up linking back up because it was like I said, like we, we always was Trump tight. We always communicated with one another. But at the end of the day, I thought the grass was greener on the other side. I got with another label and um, it didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? So I called Vic up like, yo. Is it cool if I come back? We could talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Go, go, bring it to the table. The artists on the label, if they're cool with bringing me back, man, we can, you know what I'm saying? Go, go make it happen. Because back then, <laughs> they called me the industry whore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I didn't like that, but I respected it because it was like, okay, in the real world, they felt that I was going from label to label to label. And I'm like, no, that's not even the case. It was like, you know, I was figuring it out. I was still young. I was 18, 19. You know what I'm saying? I had to find my lane, find my sound, find out who I was as an artist. And I feel like for that time span, it did, I did. I came back full circle, started helping the youth out at the Running Rebels. And that's just how the cookie crumbled. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I remember the trio, man. I mean, it's, it's good to see they still around. And, man, I used to come recording the trio, man. Shout out Shafi, man. Like, every time I went to that studio and I seen the pictures, I seen the albums, I was trying to go at y'all head, man, because I'm like, man, I'm going to be on this label. <laughs> <laughs> but it was dope, bro. And I'm like, I appreciate that label, bro. But even open up to the community and let them come record and stuff like that. Yeah. And then just giving you that inspiration, you know, but seeing all them artists like, damn, they, they got these hit songs out here in the streets. We can do the same thing. So that was dope, bro. Now, um, I also see that you're assigned to Jay Kwan's label, uh, HHM Hood Hop Music. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, how did that come about? Man, what's well, crazy, right, is that um, my manager, my manager now, H. No Beats, right? Mm -hmm. I met him a couple years ago in um, Atlanta. And this was when um, Ray Rizzi was signed to CTE, right? I met him there. And um, I was just promoting myself at that point, the She Bad record or whatever. He was promoting this artist named Kitty Cat. I was working I was working with Tony Neal at the Core DJ retreat. Shouts out to him. Shouts out to the Core DJs. You know. And um I was there doing that. I met him. And then it turns out like a couple of years later, it's like he was working with Jay Quan. And this is when Jay Quan had the tipsy record and he was booming hard. So I'm like, dang. But I always stayed in touch with H No. And then my guy, um, Y'all might know him as DJ Ace of Spades, you know what I'm saying, or Ace Smalley. He had, um, he was trying to do a throwback party, right? And I had hit my guy Snow like, yo, you still got ties with Jay Quan? He like, yeah. So then I had did the flyer for Quan, and um, Quan liked it. Like, man, who did that flyer? I was like, I did. And Snow was like, oh man, I forgot you did graphics too. I'm like, yeah. So. That's how that happened. I met Quan based off the relationship that I had with Snow, based off the fact that Ace wanted to bring Jay Quan for a throwback throwback party, you know. And that's just how the cookie crumbled. So, boom. Then when Quan got here, I introduced him myself. Like, yo, what's happening? I'm Legend. Um, I do photography, videography, and music. But I wasn't really doing music at that time. I was more worried on the business side because I'm like shit music is paying me or it pay me but I rather do what's working for me right now and I had did a I was taking pictures of Jaquan doing a video 
and I had did a little teaser, a, a video dr commercial for him, and he was like, man, send that to me, send it to me. So I'm like, all right. At that point, I was talking to his artist, Kane Coca. You know, shout out to my boy, Kane Coca. I was talking to him through him, and then Quan was like, hey, I'm gonna send you my number. I'm like, all right. So he sent me his number. I called him, gave him the video drop. That's thing I know, he put it on his IG page, tagged me in there. I'm like, man, that's love. You know, because I was a big fan of Jay Quan. I'm still him. Yeah, I know it feels surreal at times. Like, man, I'm signed to Jay, I mean, Jay Quan, you know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to him, bro, and I really was a fan with him, so that's dope. Yeah, man, so I also see that you was into managing, like, you know, like, uh, you became a manager, like, you stopped doing music, you became a manager. Um, what made you want to get into managing artists after being an artist? Well, what, get, what made me be decide to want to be a manager, like I said, I was always Trump tied with Vic, right? Big Vic, right? And his son, R.B. Vic, like, I seen him growing up, and I was like, man, he talented, he got the look, he got the swag, you know what I'm saying? The only thing that he lacked was the resources, right? Right. Now, the resources, I'm talking about DJ, stuff like that, and with me doing music, I had a bunch of DJ's connections, right? And I felt like I, I believed in R.B. Vic, I still to this, to this day, Think that he got what it takes to make it to the next level, right? Shouts out to him. And um, I was doing that, and then Vic was like, "Man, you know, legend. You know, you knew a lot of DJs. You you know, with the graphic designs, you know, a lot of promoters. What you think about managing my son?" And at this point, I'm gonna be honest. I thought he was joking. Like, man, you don't want me to be his manager, man. He like, no, I do, I do, I do. I want you to be his manager because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you grew up you grew up with him. That's like your little brother. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like family. Y'all can make it happen, right? So then that's how that happened. I started managing RB Vic. Then I started managing Dave Flywalker. Then I started managing Tay Two Cole. I managed this artist named Me Oshi. Um, I started managing Destiny Lynn. And it was like, it was from there. And then I used to manage this artist named New Money. He moved to Texas. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to New Money. But I started managing all them artists. And one thing I learned about it was like, I was able to contribute what I couldn't get from nobody else. I was able to give them what I could do for myself. So it's like, with me being able to lead that path, I knew the do's and don'ts. And I made sure that I tried to provide that same lane with them. Like, look, I went down the club lane, a lot of people box, put me in a box, was like, oh man, you just a club rapper, right? And I was like, no, I could really rap. And it's just that, to be honest, was like, at that point, nobody really wanted to really re listen to real rap. You know what I'm saying? They like, it's boring, it ain't no, personality in there. I don't want to listen to nothing. I, I want to turn up. I don't want to listen to nobody talking about, oh man, I, I grew up on the block. I had this and this and this and that. They didn't want to hear that. So I felt like it was a time and a place for that. Like if y'all wanted to hear that style of music, y'all would buy my album. But if y'all really wanted to get, get in tune with me as an artist and y'all want to support me, go buy my single. And that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So that's how I became into the manager field because Whatever I couldn't do for myself, I felt like I could do for somebody else. And it just also feels different or it feels better when you bigging up somebody else instead of you bigging up yourself. Because if you big up yourself, some people say you egotistic, you braggadocious, you know what I'm saying? You love to brag. Yeah. But when you talk about somebody else and, and they actually got the skills and the, the craft to be able to back it up, that's a win-win situation. Yeah. Now, I see that you was uh, managing Melanie Fox. Um, how did you get into doing that? Like, how did that come about? Truthfully, what happened, my, my, my fiance could get mad at me about this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I was at the strip club, right? And I seen that she was, you know, entertaining, I should say, dancing or whatnot, right? And somebody was like, yo, I heard you looking for new artists. And I'm like, yeah. It was like, she do music. And I'm like, man, yeah, right. So then I ended up meeting her because I had to do a birthday flyer for her. And that was through my guy, Too Real. Too Real introduced me to her like, yo, 
this is Melanie Fox. She needed a birthday flyer. At that point, I just knew her from the birthday flyer. And then it's like I followed her on IG. And then I seen that she was trying to drop a uh, EP or whatnot, right? And then I'm like, I had inboxed her on, or DM'd her on Instagram, like, yo, you really do music? She was like, yeah. And I'm like, man, come to my office. At this point, I guess she didn't know the brother to believe me or not. Like, a lot of people say they got an office. A lot of people say they do this and do that. A lot of people try to use their profession to get a little cookie and a crumble. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that she took that leap of faith with me, came up to the office, played me some of her music. And I was like, yo, you dope. You different. You know what I'm saying? With her being able to do R&B and rap. I was like, that's a blessing and a, and a lesson at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that just that's just how it happened. She came up here, we she played her music. I introduced her to the label. She was vibing with the people. I had a showcase last year, a TL management showcase. She was in the showcase. It was her, Tay Two Cole, Crystal Renee, Track Sanders, um, this artist named Protege. It was him. And it was myself, and um, it was music DJ by um, Ace of Spades. So I had a showcase that year, that year last year in, in um, November at the Oasis. So I had it there, and one thing everybody said was like, "Yo, you got a solid all-star team." But that Melanie Fox is some serious. Like they said, that she had the look, she had the sound. Only thing she was missing was the exposure. And I felt like with my skill of talent, I could help her get to where she needs to be at. And so far, it's going pretty good so far. Yeah. Now, that was dope, bro. Um, congratulations on that. Because I remember when I hit her, because I seen she was doing skits and everything, and when I hit her, she was like, oh, um, hit my manager, Young Legend. I'm like, I know Legend. Let me hit Legend up, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I, I think that's dope, bro, like that you, you know, you find that female artist, she's, and it works good for her because she's, in a, she's an exotic dancer and she's an artist, so she can easily get her music played in the club or where she's working at and stuff. So Correct. That's dope, bro. Congratulations on that, and um, I believe she definitely in good hands. You know, because I see what you can do, and you've been around, and you've been in this game for so long. You know the ins and outs, so she's in good hands. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. For sure. Now, it's good to see you back into music and everything, man, and um, back managing and stuff like that. So what's next for you? Like, what's next? Like, what can the people see or hear coming from Young Legend? Well, for y'all that know, y'all already knew Y'all knew about the She Bad record. Now, it's new record that I'm pushing called Go Stupid, right? That's produced by Ride Out, the same person that did She Bad. Like, I just hit a Ride Out a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, bro, I'm not gonna lie, I'm trying to go back to the basics. That's my formula right now. I'm going back to the basics. I'm going back to what worked for me. I hit him up, got a beat from him. It was a beat that I had got back, got from him probably like a year ago. And I was sitting on a record, because it was like, I wasn't doing no music like that. I was writing records, and I was actually wrote that record for somebody but it was in a, a lane, a speed. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it, use it myself then, you know? And I finally had the energy and the time to just say, forget it. Let me just go ahead and do this, do, do this song. I called my guy Verse up. And I was like, yo, you got any studio time open? He was like, yeah. He's like, I got around 5 o'clock. I'm like, all right. So he, I call him up. I get there around 5 o'clock for the studio session. Now, when I first do the song... He like, bro, this ain't this ain't it, bro. And I'm like, what you mean? I'm like, what was it the lyrics? Was it the delivery? Did I not do it good? He was like, I don't know. I don't know. It just this ain't the legend that I'm used to hearing, right? So in my mind, I'm like, I do the verses okay. I didn't like the way I delivered the hook. So then he like, look, I'm gonna give you this session, this song. Just go back to the drum board, right? Me being me. I'm hard-headed. I'm like, no, nah, this is it. Like, maybe I just got to perfect it. Because like I said, I wrote the record for somebody else. So I kind of made it according to how they sound, you know. So then I called him back up the following Monday, like, bro, you got any time open? He like, yeah, I'll get you at 11 o'clock. 
I'm like, I right, bet. At that point, I was only going in there to go do the hook over. Because I'm like, I was satisfied with the verses, but the, it's the hook that wasn't hitting me right. I redid the hook, and then he was like, oh, this sound 10 times better. This sound day and night. You know, so then I'm like, you know what? Let me just redo the verses. Now, bullshit you not. I did the whole song over in 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, dang, you did this fast. Yeah. So he was like, you did this fast. I'm like, man, I, I kind of know the song by heart now. You know, you lit a little fire into my ass when you say you didn't like the record. So when he told me that, I'm like, man, this this the one, bro. This is my new, this is my comeback. Recorded the song over, did it, and he was like, he did his little touches to it. And I was like, bro, that's dope. He was like, yeah, 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 this sounds valid now. Nah. He was like, this sounds way better. I'm like, man, I appreciate it. But I was grateful that he even told me what he told me that made me want to redo the record to prove him wrong. And I realized that's kind of how I am with me being a bull. I'm bullheaded. So if you tell me something, I'm, my job is to prove you wrong. If you tell me, man, I, I, some people do it on purpose. They know that I'm guilty of it. But you say, I bet you can't go sell 100 CDs. Uh, you want to bet that? All right. Give me, about, give me a couple hours. I have it gone. Boom, that's just how I am. My job is to prove you wrong. And whatever I got to do to do it, boom, I'm going to make it happen. All right. And well, that's what's up, man. Like, um, I see that grind in you, bro. Like, you at every, almost every event, if not every event, um, you know a lot of people. You know, you know a lot of DJs. Like I said, you've been around. You've been with the label, Trio. And um, you've just been putting that work, man. Staying consistent, man. Because you... You you got it on all all like you said a jack of all trades. You do graphics, uh, you, you do music, you manage like it's just so much you do, bro. And like I think that's really good. Like you know, you can really do some good for the city, bro. Like with, yeah. the, with the younger artists and stuff like that, and keeping them from making mistakes you feel like you probably made, and um, guide them into another um, direction that you wish you probably would have took. So I definitely think that's dope, bro. So um, congratulations to all that, man, on your on your success of what you've been doing behind the scenes. And uh, congratulations on your deal with Jay Quan and the songs you got coming out and stuff like that and the artists you're working with, bro. And uh, I, I, most of all, I want to appreciate you. I mean, I want to thank you for coming on this show, man, and answering these questions for me because you could be anywhere else right now, but you here on the rap draft answering these questions with me, man. So I appreciate you for coming on the show, my bro. Man, I appreciate you for allowing me to get on your show, man, because it's like, believe it or not, man, I done reached out to a couple podcasts, stuff like that, and some people felt like, you know, Legend, he was a, he's a has-been. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, if you would have reached out to me a couple years ago, I would have glad to had you on my podcast but i'm like damn that's crazy bro like it is what it is mm -hmm. so it's like man when you hit me up it's like bro let's do an interview i'm like let's do it tomorrow let's get it man it's an honor to be on the rap drive man because it's like most people i'm saying let's be honest like they don't see things the way they is until they see it built already they don't they don't like to see the, the leg work they like to see what is already there where they could just walk on that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i seen from last year, I seen it like, dog, like, that's cold. What he got going on? Like, the rap drive for you to think like that, bro, like, that shit 100. And it's like, you, you allowing artists, the, you giving artists a platform for them to get their music heard and recognized. Because you yourself, you know a lot of heavy hitters too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You slap city with Ray Shotty. You know what I'm saying? That, that right there alone is a, a stamp of approval from the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's cold. And you know what I'm saying? Hopefully when you when you when y'all start shooting it again, man, hopefully you do a little strip club scene or whatever, man, throw me in the mix, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah, but we working on it, man. I appreciate you, bro. Cause that do mean a lot, man. You know. Uh we we definitely be working. Like when your when your work like gets um, you know, seen and you get recognition for it and people telling you, that's more inspiration for you to keep going. So I appreciate you for saying that, man. And um, like I said, I appreciate you for coming on this show. And I wish you the best of luck on your journey, bro. And I appreciate it, man. And much luck to you. Yeah, appreciate you. Much love.